A first-year student named Tsushia, Tomoya has a dream that he wants to achieve as soon as he enters the university. The dream he dreams of is to get a girlfriend when he enters the university. Tsushia wasn't famous during high school at all, which is why he couldn't get any girlfriends during his high school time. However, after only three months of entering the university, he found his dream girl, that is Sakuraba Waka. Tsushia bumps into her and asks him if she starts from period 2-2, and she answers yes. They both are in their first year and in the same club as him. After seeing her, Tomoyo-kun gets happy because he thinks he saw an angel in the morning. Then Sakuraba Waka asks him if he is going to the club after school today, and he replies probably he will probably go as he is free anyway. She gets happy and tells him if he is going, she will be coming there too. Then Sakuraba leaves and says goodbye to Tsushia and he thinks about how can be someone so cute like that, as she is the first girl he talks to in the club. In April, Tsushia thinks if he wants to get a girlfriend, he needs to join a club and look around for that first. While walking, he sees a travel club poster and wonders if there is something like that too. He thinks maybe this is for those who like traveling. He keeps thinking about it, and then Sakuraba calls him from behind to ask if he is a member of this club too. He finds her cute and replies that he isn't a member of this club and he is just looking around the clubs to find one suitable for him. After listening to this, she tells him that she is also looking around the clubs and then asks him if he likes traveling. He then tells her that he likes it a little and she says she likes traveling too. Meanwhile, Tsushia Tomoya is thinking if she joins the club, then he will join it too, and he fell in love with her at first sight. Tsushia has been trying to get closer to Waka Chain since then. He desperately tries to talk to her on different occasions, and now he can talk to her normally. When Sakuraba leaves after saying goodbye to Tsushia Tomoya, his best friend from the club says that they saw it all. They say that, that Tomoya Waka seems to be very close to Waka Chan these days, and the other friends say practice makes it perfect as they always see him trying to talk to her. Tomoya Waka says, Waka chan is amazing and kind of cute. She is always cheerful and she always looks very innocent and childish. According to him, Waka chan is truly a descended angel. Then his friend asks him if he isn't going to confess to her, and he says it is too soon to do it. Then his friend tells him if he doesn't hurry, then she is going to get stolen by other guys for sure as she has a lot of flies around her. While leaving, his friend says to him to man up if he wants to get her and calls him a virgin. Tomoyo-kun angrily says not to call him a virgin, thinks he needs a girlfriend indeed and thinks about confessing to her. He thinks it is true that these days he feels closer to Waka-chan, but he is not sure if she will agree if he confesses to her. Then he gets chill if she agrees, then he will have a cute girlfriend like her but he doesn't want to confess to her as he doesn't have the guts to do it. Tomoyukun goes to the travel club and says thanks to Waka-chan for the hard work she did and she thanks him back. Every year, the travel club organizes two domestic tours and the rest will be gathering in the club room however they like. During the holiday, they will organize some activities somewhere close by. Tsushi Tomoya thinks he doesn't know whom to talk to as his friends aren't there and they are usually absent. However, he has hoped that Waka-chan will come as she told him earlier and thinks he will just wait until then. After waiting in there for a while, the girls who were in there tell him that they are going to their homes and he says thanks to them again for their hard work. Then he checks the time on his phone and thinks Waka-chan is still not here yet. She might be busy, so he should be getting going as well. He opens the door to leave the club and bumps into Waka-chan as she is already standing out there. After seeing her, he gets super excited and jumps on her, which is why they both fall on the ground and his hand is on her melon. Tsu Xia feels awkward and removes his hand from there and says sorry to her, but she tells him that it is fine and there is no need to worry about it. She thinks if it is Tomoyo Kun, then it is fine and Tsushia has a very good feeling that Waka-chan must be liking him as well. Then he motivates himself to confess to her and tells himself to brave up. He tries his level best to confess and keeps saying that he has, but cannot say anything else and thinks he cannot mutter it out at all. He leaves from there and says it is nothing, he just realized something so he needs to go now. He thinks for the last 18 years he has been just a virgin and he knows nothing about love. Thus, it is impossible to confess to her, 
and he feels useless due to it. While walking, he checks his phone and cannot find it. So he thinks if the phone fell off earlier and goes to the travel club again to look for it. Before entering, he says it would be so embarrassing seeing Waka-chan in there again right now and opens the door to go in there. He sees Waka-chan sitting on a chair holding a phone in her hands. Waka-chan says that she is so tired of always smiling like this and she is tired of the cute voice she has. She says being a naive girl like this isn't fun at all and then there is this virgin about whom she thought that he was going to confess to her, but then he just ran home all of a sudden. People like that should stay virgins. After hearing this, Tomoyo-kun cannot believe what she just said, and then Waka-chan says that Waka-chan is always being awkward around her, but she cannot do anything about it. It is because she is too cute and she cannot make herself do it. Amidst. Tomoyo-kun enters inside and Waka-chan gets shocked, so she asks him, what is the problem? He tries to say something, but she interrupts again. Then he asks her if she just changed her character and Waka-chan questions him what he means by changing character. He cannot take it anymore, so he towards the door and tells her that he is going home. Waka-chan shouts from behind, stops right there, and asks him if he saw it or not. Then she locks the door and Tomoyo-kun asks her, what is she trying to do? She says to him that he has set his eyes on her for so long and questions him if he likes her a lot or not. However, as usual, he didn't reply so she asked him again if he was going to confess to her earlier, but he did not reply. Therefore, she asks another question, that which part of her he likes. Then he finally replies that he likes her because she is very cute and very kind as well. After which, she says it is such a shame because that character of her is just a fake character. Tomoyo-kun cannot believe her words, so he says it cannot be true and asks her what happened to the waka he knows this whole time. She replies that is just her made-up personality. She tells him the cute face he saw this whole time that was all fake, and he asks her in shock, why did she that because he cannot believe her words? Then she replies that she did all this because she feels very fun when playing around with a virgin like him and smiles. Tomoyo-kun still cannot believe her and she tells him to make him believe that she does this because teasing virgins like him is really fun and it is all just a piece of cake for her. Tomoyo-kun then says that she is so evil and he asks her if it is true that she has been playing around with him this whole time and she asks in return if he is mad at her. Tomoyo-kun says if this is reality, then he is going to tell everyone about her and what kind of person she is. Waka-chan then says to him that he can tell everything to everyone, but she will also tell them that he accidentally touched her melons. Then she shows him the picture while he is on her, and he asks her when she got that, to which she replies that she just took it when she saw him like that earlier. Then she makes fun of him and says, so this is how a virgin reacts, and he angrily says to her to go to hell. He cannot believe if this is really her, so he questions himself if it is so. Meanwhile, she questions him if she should send the picture to the club group or the department group. Tomoyo-kun thinks if this news spreads out, then everyone will call him a Lester and his dream of finding a girlfriend would evaporate. Waka-chan then says she is not going to tell anyone, but he has to do the same if he wants her not to send the picture to anyone. Tomoyo-kun accepts it and says he will do the same as she wants and thinks he used to like this kind of girl. He feels bad for trusting a woman like that and then he gets up to leave for home as he lost all of his hope. He tells her that he is going home now, but Waka-chan asks him to wait. She tells him that she needs help with something and asks if he can stay around a bit. Tomoyo-kun asks her what it is because he doesn't have a good feeling about it at all. Then they both go out to eat ramen and Tomoyo-kun asks her, why are they having ramen? She replies because she is hungry, that is why they are here to eat and there is no other reason behind it. Then Tomoyo-kun asks her if she is going to threaten him again and calls her evil, but she says she is not going to threaten him and she is going to pay for it herself. She tells him it is just that she always wanted to have ramen at this place for a very long time, thus she just wanted to come with it. Tomoyo-kun is shocked, so he asks her if it is just it and if she is not going to blackmail him and she angrily questions him about what kind of person he thinks she is. She asks what ramen has to do with her personality and if is she not allowed to eat with other people. 
Tomoyo Kun says to her that she can go with someone else, but she says that she cannot go with anyone else because she has built up a character that will say no to fat foods with everyone. Tomoyo Kun asks what kind of personality it is and says to her that she could have gone by herself, and she replies that a girl cannot just go to eat by herself, which is why she came here with him. Then she says if she were to be found out, then there goes her character. While they are talking, Tomoyo Kun's friends see him with Waka chan, and one of them asks if it is Waka chan with him. Tomoyo Kun also sees them, so he asks, What are they doing here? And they say that they have heard that the ramen here is really good, and it is a coincidence that they bumped into each other. His friend asks him, Why is he with Waka chan? But he cannot come up with anything, so Waka chan covers it by saying that Tomoyo Kun really wanted to eat it, so she just tagged along. Tomoyo Kun smiles and says he invited her to cover up the situation he had to say it, and his friend whispers in his ear that who would invite their crush to a ramen store, and the other one says Waka hates ramen. Meanwhile, Tomoyo Kun thinks that he is the one invited here, and his friends say that they are going to sit over there and say to Tomoyo Kun to take his time. Then Waka chan smiles evilly and says that going with him means having a barrier, and Tomoyo Kun gets really annoyed after listening to this. Amidst, Waka-chan ties her hair up and says finally she is able to eat. She takes the first spoon of the ramen. She really likes the ramen and Tomoyo thinks he has to say that she looks completely different from her usual self and he keeps looking at her from his side eye. Then she notices him so she asks what he wants and he says that she is a stronger eater. Waka-chan questions him if there is any problem with that and he says no there is no problem at all and finds it frustrating. They ask for another bowl of ramen, and then they both leave after eating it. While walking out of the restaurant, she appreciates the food and says that this place is really good. Although she couldn't go with her friends, it is good enough to have a person with free time here. After hearing this, Tomoyo gets more annoyed and he asks her what she means by free time and finds it really annoying. Then he asks her why did she even bother pretending like this, and she says that doing so would make her life happier. She says who wouldn't like a cute and kind girl, and everything will be much easier for her by acting like this. However, she feels bad that she got a virgin boy like him, and Tomoyo Kun gets really angry after heating it. Then he asks her if it is true that she is ready to go that far and hide her true self like this, and she says of course she will as living with true self isn't fun at all. Then she says to him that he must be really disappointed with the real her like this, and he says he is really disappointed. She says that it is fast, but how should she say this, that before every time she talked to him, she felt really nervous and she didn't know what he was thinking. Then she says that she only had a few interactions with him and today is the first time. They can talk normally together. Tomoyo Kun says that even though he was very shocked and angry as well, but he feels easier talking like this to her. Wakachan doesn't reply, and then Tomoyo Kun says that he is very angry though, and she tells him rudely that she is heading that way and says bye to him. Both of them walk in the opposite direction, and Wakachan thinks how he said that he feels easier talking to her like this. She thinks who needs him to say that. No matter what he says, it will not make her happy at all. She says this while looking at his picture on her phone. Tomoyo Kun is disappointed because the Waka chan he liked all this time turns out to be a fake and mean person, and he thought that she was cute and angel, but who would have known that it would be like this? He thinks what is the point of his efforts all this time as he tries his level best to get close to her and decrease the distance between them. He feels very awkward when he thinks about how she called him a virgin and he wants his three months of youth bat. Thinking about how hard he tried to get close to her makes him so embarrassed and he regrets it so much. While he is thinking about all he went through, Waka-chan comes and says to him not to ignore her like that. He then asks her if he is supposed to act like usual after what happened yesterday, but she doesn't reply at all. Then she asks if he is still mad about what happened yesterday, and he says, of course he is. Then she says sorry to him because she couldn't tell him the truth, so that is why she had to lie to him. In fact, the whole toying with him thing was all a lie and Tomoyo Kun is in shock after listening to it. Then she says that the truth is that she likes him. Tomoyo Kun gets excited after listening to it, but his excitement doesn't stay for too long as she is just kidding. He says to her that he will never believe her again and she laughs after listening to it as he is so easy to trick. Amidst, 
He thinks that he already knows that her cute face is fake, but he gets tricked by her again. While they are walking, Waka-chan's best friend from the club says hi to her, and Tomoyo-kun listens to their conversation while thinking that she changed so quickly. Then her friend says hi to Susushia and asks Waka-chan if she has done the report for today. She tells her that she already did it, and her friend asks her if it was difficult. She says that it wasn't difficult at all and the length requirement wasn't too hard either, but the summary was hard though. Then she asks Susuchia, Tomoyo-kun, what are his thoughts but he is in a state of shock. Therefore, she asks him what is wrong with his face and asks if he forgot to do it. Tomoyo-kun says that he had forgotten it and planned on doing it yesterday, but then he completely forgot about it because so many things happened and he went through a headache. Then she asks him if he is all right and tells him that the do is really soon. Then she asks Waka-chan, why doesn't she help him? And Waka-chan says she will help with Shirley. She tells Tomoyo-kun that they should go together to do it. Amidst, Tomoyo-kun thinks it is scary how easy she pretends and he doubts that she is really going to help him. Waka-chan's friend leaves saying that she is going to go to her part-time job and wishes them good luck. Then Waka-chan and Tomoyo-kun go to the club and Waka-chan tells him that they have only 800 words and they should finish it on time. All he needs to do is to summarize these. Meanwhile, Tomoyo-kun is shocked, so he asks her if she is really going to help him and she says of course she is going to help him as she made a promise. Tomoyo-kun says that he thought she was just pretending and she tells him that she will never break a promise like that. It is because Waka-chan is extremely kind and Tomoyo-kun asks him in a taunting tone who told her that. Then she tells him to hurry up and that she will lend him her notes in the middle of which he feels weird because he thinks she is an obnoxious person who only knows to tease people but nothing is like that and she is helping him while she is helping him do his task. He is thinking if she does all these good things as well. After working for a while, he finally submits his report and Waka-chan says it is all thanks to her and tells him to be grateful to her. Tomoyo-kun says, of course. He is going to thank her properly and says thanks to her. They both stare at each other for a second and then look away. Waka-chan says there is no problem in helping him and then they both stay quiet for a bit. Then she tells him if he wants to thank her then all he needs to do is to buy her food in the cafeteria and he thinks that this was her motive all along. He accepts to buy food for her in the cafeteria, but only something that is cheap. Then both of them go to the cafeteria to eat lunch. And she says while eating food that free food from the virgin tastes so good. Tomoyo-kun tells her not to say that or else he is going to get mad. He asks her why did she order something so expensive and she tells him that she wanted to eat it. He thinks it seems like he is getting ticked by her a lot now and he keeps quiet for a bit after it. After eating lunch, both of them walk out of the cafeteria and Waka-chan says that she is full amidst. Tomoyo-kun thinks that he wasted a lot of money and she gets to save hers. She asks him what he means by wasted and says to him that he should be happy right now because he got to eat with a cute girl. Tomoyo-kun says he is not happy at all and Waka-chan says bye to him as she got period three class. She runs towards the class and says, thanks to him for paying for her lunch. Tomoyo-kun feels mad somehow because she wasn't obnoxious at all. While she is running, she bumps into someone and says sorry to him. However, the guy says that he should be sorry as it is his mistake. Waka-chan bumps into Hariyama Daiki, a third-year president of the traveling club. She says sorry to the president because she didn't him and bumped into him. The president says hello to her and says what a coincidence it is as Tsushia is also there as well. He brought some special Vietnamese food for Waka-chan and told her to share it with the first year. Waka-chan gets happy after seeing the food so she thanks him for his effort in bringing food for her and the first year. Then she asks him if he just come back from Vietnam and he says yeah, he has just returned from Japan. After listening to this, Tomoyo-kun asks him shockingly if he had just gone overseas recently and the president tells him that he went overseas last month. Then the president gives them the food and says it is so much fun to share the food like this. The president is extremely in love with traveling and he wanted to have more friends who liked traveling, so he created the club last year. The president told this story at the new members party so that everyone knows how this club is made. Then the president tells them that they should utilize all their free time and go traveling more this year as traveling is fun. 
By traveling, one gets to go to new places, learn all about new cultures, and get to meet local people. Moreover, traveling is also very romantic, which is why the president wants everyone to experience the wonder of traveling. College life must also include time to enjoy the fun of traveling. This is why the president created the traveling club so that they can all have fun traveling everywhere together. Meanwhile, Tomoyo thinks that the president is so enthusiastic and the first time he met him, he was so surprised. Then the president says to everyone that he is thankful that all of them joined the traveling club and then says to everyone there is no need to go overseas to travel because local traveling is also fun. While he is talking to everyone, a girl comes and says to Daichi that he is going to scare the first years. The girl is known as Suzuko and her full name is Amamiya Suzuko, a third year member of the traveling club. She asks Daichi, what is he doing here as she hasn't seen him around lately? Did he go somewhere again? Then the president says that he just left for a few days because it is going to be very busy next year. So this year, he wanted to travel every chance he gets. Then Suzuko says that it is fine he goes, but skipping classes all the time like this means he might have to repeat another year again. She said this to him because the president is the one who is repeating this year because of skipping classes last year. Then Suzuko says sorry to everyone there and says that their president gets a little too energetic and Tomoyo-kun says it is fine. Then Suzuko asks Tomoyo what has happened if he is really tired and Tomoyo asks her what is she talking about as he doesn't have any clue regarding this question. Suzuko tells him that there are dark circles under his eyes and Tomoyo tells her that these are because he couldn't sleep much yesterday. He couldn't sleep much because of the shock Waka-chan gave her, and he is still suffering through it. Then Suzuko asks him if something is bothering him, and he says that it is not like that and he is fine. Suzuko gets close to him and asks if he is sure that there is nothing because his face is very red too. Amidst, he is thinking that her face is so close to him and her melons are right in front of him, but he controls himself and tells her that he is fine and there is nothing at all. Suzuko then says if this is the case, then it is fine, but if he has trouble with something, then he can just tell her right away. After listening to this, Tomoyo's eyes fill with sparkle, and then Suzuko says the same for Waka-chan that she can come up to her anytime she needs. Then the president and Suzuko leave as it is time for their third period class. Tomoyo thinks that it is really stressful as he is not used to talking with beautiful girls like Suzuko-senpai. It was so stressful for him when he met her, and she is a beauty too, but she is completely different than Waka-chan. She is the type of woman who is mature and fashionable, the type one can only meet when going to college. He keeps looking at Suzuko and then Waka-chan asks him, why is he so nervous while talking to a beautiful senpai like that? But he doesn't tell her all of it and Waka-chan tells him to shut up because she knows that is not all of it. Then Tomoyo tells her that she has a period three class, so she should hurry and go there and she says fine, she will go then. Meanwhile, he thinks about why Waka-chan got mad but has no idea. And then the president turns around and says to them that they are going to have a cherry picking picnic tomorrow. So remember to wear something that is easy to move around in. Tomoyo-kun says that he understood the task of the president, but in reality, he doesn't know what cherry picking means. Waka-chan is eating cherries in the woods and Tomoyo's friends admire her beauty while she is enjoying the taste of cherries. They say that Waka-chan's cuteness is really the best and she makes them feel so peaceful. She looks like she is the spirit of the cherry garden, but Tomoyo thinks that these guys haven't experienced the real Waka-chan. Then the president comes to them and says, isn't this exciting? And they should be more excited as cherry picking is super awesome. Then he tells everyone when the season changes from spring to summer like this, it is cherry season and they can all enjoy foods made from cherries while they bond with their friends. Nearly 70% of all cherries grown in Japan come from Yamaka is the best. Then the president asks them what is wrong as they were so happy recently. And then Tomoyo says today's club activity is cherry picking in a weird tone. Yesterday, the president told them about the cherry picking picnic but Tomoyo didn't know what it was, so he asked Waka-chan about it, and she asked him if he doesn't remember it. Then Tomoyo says that they agreed that their club would participate the other day, but Waka-chan doesn't say anything in return. Last week, the president told everyone that he was thinking of planning their second trip as a club, 
and it will be their first cherry blossom viewing party, and they are also welcoming their members. He tells everyone to raise their hands if they want to come and Tomoyo and Waka-chan raise their hand as they want to come to the picnic. He thought since Waka said she would go, he did too without even thinking. In the cherry garden, Tomoyo's friends ask why are the three of them just eating the cherries here and Tomoyo says, this seems pretty lame to him though. Tomoyo's friend joined the club for girls, but he meets boys instead. Then Tomoyo's friend asks him if he is not going to hang out with Waka and he asks them, why would he hang out with her and why would he say that to him? His friend says, usually when he gets a chance like this, he would be hanging all over her and Tomoyo thinks that was when he didn't know the true face of Waka. His friends ask him, why is he acting so pathetic and being such a coward as well? And he says it is not like that at all. Tomoyo Kun is going to tell his friend about the real face of Waka-chan, but she interrupts and asks him what is going on here. Tomoyo looks at her with an awkward expression, and then Waka-chan asks his friends if she can borrow him for a bit. Waka-chan takes Tomoyo on the side, and then she asks if she told him to keep it a secret, and he says it was an accident. She says to him that he almost ruined her perfect girl image, and Tomoyo asks her if she is a celebrity now. Waka-chan takes her phone out and says she guesses she will have to upload this photo now, and Tomoyo-kun says sorry to her, and that it will not happen again. Waka-chan walks away and says it is all right, and tells him that picking cherries is more fun. She picks up a cherry and eats it while Tomoyo keeps looking at her. Then she asks him if he is not going to eat any, and he says that he is eating them. Waka-chan then picks up another cherry and gives it to Tomoyo and says that it looks very delicious. She tells him to open his mouth, but she doesn't give him and eats it herself. Tomoyo says that she is teasing him again only because his body automatically reacts. Even if he wasn't here, she would just tease the others. Then Tomoyo says to her if she wants to tease virgins, then she can just go bother those other two as he already knows how she really is anyway and it wouldn't be funnier to tease people who don't know the real her. Waka-chan says sure she will do it and then leaves and Tomoyo thinks, why did she get mad now? When she leaves everyone asks her what happened to her and where is Tomoyo as she is alone. While Tomoyo is walking alone, Suzuko Senpai comes from behind and calls him then she asks him if he is having fun and he tells her that yes, he is enjoying a lot here. Then Tomoyo says that they are lucky to have such good weather today and Suzuko agrees with him. She says it is so breezy today and Tomoyo thinks that she is as beautiful as an angel and he still cannot get used to it. Then she says Tomoyo that she has something to tell him personally and asks if she can tell him. Tomoyo-kun allows her to tell him whatever she wants to say, but in his mind, he is thinking why is she so close? He feels nervous because of it and thinks that she smiles so good. Suzuko whispers in his ears that she wants to tell him that he hasn't zipped up his pants. Tomoyo-kun looks down and gets embarrassed when he sees his zipper opened and then he says sorry and thanks Suzuko that she told him about it. Suzuko laughs and says she is also sorry because she should have told him earlier, but she didn't know how to say it. Tomoyo walks away and thinks that he just wants to die because it is very humiliating for him and Suzuko asks him if he knows the cherries at the top taste the best. He asks her if it is true and she says yes, it is. This is because they can get more sunlight and then shows him a twin cherry. Suzuko eats the twin cherries and he thinks Suzuko Senpai and the cherries are a deadly combo. She offers him one if he likes to eat and he asks her in return if he can have one and she tells him of course he can. She tells him to just take the cherry from her hand and he says thanks to her after taking it from her hand. Amidst, he thinks that she is so mature and totally different from Waka-chan. Then she leaves and tells him that she is going to go over there while Waka-chan is looking at him. He thinks that Suzuko Senpai is so kind but he tells himself that he cannot let the kindness of girls trick him again. However, he looks at Suzuko Senpai talking to another girl and thinks that she does look very thoughtful to everyone. He thinks Suzuko has grown up anyway and she wouldn't be so childish, only Waka-chan is like that. In the middle of this, Waka-chan bumps into him again and she asks him what it is as he seems really happy just right now. He asks her what is he happy about and she says he just has a chit-chat with Suzuko Senpai and blows her nails to look cool. 
Tomoyo-kun is shocked at her and thinks that he cannot say that she was telling him that he forgot to zip his pants. Waka would laugh in his face for sure. He finds it really embarrassing that is why he decides not to tell her what Suzuko said to him. Therefore, he says it wasn't a big deal and Waka-chan stays quiet after hearing it. He tells her that he heard that he heard the higher the cherry grows, the better it will taste and she says she doesn't know about it because she can only eat those cherries which are lower because of her height. He tells her that Suzuko Senpai told him about this, and after hearing this Waka-chan says that she will get some higher ones then. She climbs the stairs and picks the one which looks delicious. Amidst, Tomoyo-kun is staring at the lower part of her body as she is on the stairs. He thinks that she almost did a panty flash and she tells him about the red cherry she just picked. Then he thinks she is just teasing him right now again, and she will say that only a pathetic virgin would peek at a girl's skirt. Waka-chan eats the cherry and says it is true the higher the cherry grows, the more delicious it is. Meanwhile, Tomoyo-kun thinks that Waka-chan didn't seem to notice. Then some random passerby stares at her while she is up in the air so Tomoyo-kun tells her not to climb too high and she asks him why because she wants to try some from even higher up. He keeps telling her not to go any higher because her skirt is visible. After hearing it, Waka-chan feels embarrassed, and she yells at him where he thinks he is looking and tells him that she is wearing shorts underneath, so it is fine. Then she takes another step to climb higher, but her foot slips and she falls. However, Tomoyokun catches her in his hands and they both fall to the ground. While she is on him, he thinks she is too close, and then he picks her up while thinking she is so tiny like this and so slim. He thinks her smell is also so good and then Waka-chan gets up on her own and walks away. Tomoyo-kun also walks behind her and asks if she is okay. If is she hurt and she says it is fine and she is sorry for that. Meanwhile, Tomoyo-kun is thinking about why she got so quiet and finds it weird. Waka-chan asks him while facing in the opposite direction, why did he catch her and he questions her why she asked this. Then he tells her that seeing her fall in front of him like that will of course make him try to catch her. However, she doesn't say a word after that, and Tomoyo-kun says to her that he is glad that she is not hurt and tells her to be extra careful. While he is walking away from there, Waka-chan holds her skirt and feels really nervous. Then the president tells Tomoyo that they need to start getting ready to go and Tomoyo thinks time does fly fast. Tomoyo gets ready as they have to go and Waka-chan holds his shirt from the back. That is why he asks her what is wrong with her, if there is a problem and she says thanks to him for earlier as he saved her. Then she runs away saying she needs to go and says bye to him. Tomoyo-kun wondered what was with that. It almost felt like she showed him something real. He thinks if she keeps behaving like that, then she will be a hell of cute. But then he stops himself because he thinks that he cannot let himself be tricked again. Tomoyo-kun is in the middle of deep thoughts and then his friends come and ask him about the conversation he had with Waka-chan. Tomoyo says it was nothing and his friends say here he goes again. But Tomoyo keeps telling them to make them believe that there is nothing like that. Then Tomoyo thinks about how she went away when he told her to go and tease some other virgin. He thinks if Waka told his friends anything. It was all because of her fake flirty behavior before that he fell for her and, and it would be kind of funny if they got tricked too. Then he asks his friends if they talk to Waka about anything and they tell him that they just talked to her about the cherries and how they are so good. Tomoyo then asks if they talked about anything else and they say that they didn't talk about anything else other than cherries. Then his friend says that he has a feeling. She just walked past them like she was a zombie and she was really quiet and didn't say anything. Tomoyo questions him after this if he is afraid that she might fall for one of them first. And his friend says that there is not a single chance. Then he thinks that that's it. He keeps thinking she is going to tease them but she hasn't done anything to them. While his friend is thinking Tomoyo is such a wuss sometimes, Tomoyo keeps thinking that she has been playing with his feelings for three months now, and why is it only him? She only does it with him, so then does she really like him after all? He calls himself stupid for thinking this because this will never happen. It is because the real Waka-chan he knows is like a player and she only sees him as a toy. Therefore, he tells himself that he cannot fall for it and that he will not be tricked again. Waka-chan walks away from Tomoyo, and she thinks why is he so kind to her? 
Ever since they first met, she keeps thinking about it and then her friends ask her where is she going alone? But she doesn't reply at all as she is thinking about Tomoyo Kun. After the cherry picking event, that night, the president asks if everyone has a drink and thanks them all for being here today. Wakachai and Tomoyo's friend toast their drinks and Waka toast it with Tomoyo too. While drinking the drink, Tomoyo thinks that even though he knows she is just faking it, she is still so cute. One of them then asks Waka, what is she drinking? So she tells them that she is drinking a non-alcoholic cocktail, and she thinks there are strawberries and oranges in it too. Then his friend says to her that even her drink is as feminine as her, and Tomoyo thinks that she can eat a full bowl of noodles all by herself. Then the president says having a drink after all that hard work feels so good and Suzuko says to him that he didn't do any hard work, it was just cherries. The president then asks her if she is not drinking a beer and she says that she has to go to work tomorrow so she cannot drink it. She says to the president if he gets all drunk then she has to take him home and the president says it is not a big deal. Suzuko says that he always says that and he drinks a ton of beer. Meanwhile, one of their friends is thinking if it is just him or Suzuko Senpai and Daishi Senpai looks just like a couple to him. Suzuko says it is not like that, and the president says don't be silly as they became childhood friends when they were little. They have been hanging out ever since, so they talk to each other just like siblings with no embarrassment at all. He asks Suzuko, he is right, and she agrees with him. Then she says that they are more like being gifted with a burden and they have been stuck with each other since elementary school, and that is why things are like this. The guy understands it after this and says he didn't know about it, which is why he misunderstood it. Then the guy says it is so nice having a childhood friend, and he doesn't have a single friend of a different gender. The other friend says he doesn't have an opposite gender friend either, and they are the same. Suzuko then tells them that it is not a big deal and then the guy says to Tomoyo that he is just like them who has no girls around at all. Tomoyo tells him not to talk nonsense like that as he used to have one female childhood friend. They couldn't believe him and he called him a traitor because he always thought girls had never been interested in him. And Tomoyo-kun says they were just friends. He clarifies that they had no crush on each other and Waka-chan asks him who she is and if he has any pictures with her. Tomio-kun starts to think about why Waka-chan asked that, and Waka says she is curious, she wants to see the picture. Then Tomio-kun takes out his phone to look for the picture, and he says he just got a picture with her from the middle school graduation day, and all of them are interested to see it. When he shows the picture, Waka-chan and his friend look directly into the phone, and then his friend asks what it is, and why is she so cute? His friend gets angry and says to Tomoyo that he is lying as there is no way someone like him could have such a cute friend like that. He is jealous of him. So he says to Tomoyo that he betrayed them and his friend says that they do not believe it until he introduces her to them. Tomoyo then tells them that they used to be very close back then, but they grew apart in middle school and went in separate directions. They never talked again in high school and they hadn't talked for a while before they took this picture. Now, he didn't know how to get in touch with her as they hadn't seen each other for a long time. His friend gets happy after hearing this, and he says that it is all in the past, and Tomoyo-kun says it still counts. It didn't have to be a girl in the present. Waka-chan says thinking about the fact that even Tomoyo-kun had a female friend is painful, and Tomoyo asks what she means by even. While they are debating, one of the girls calls Waka-chan and she goes to meet her. Tomoyo's friend says she is so popular and loved by both girls and boys. He says all this is because she is a kind person. Meanwhile, Tomoyo-kun thinks everybody thinks Waka-chan is a kind person, and he can kind of see why she has to fake it. After drinking, he leaves, and while walking, he thinks that just sitting in the bar is tiring. Moreover, the fumes got his head spinning without having any drinks. He keeps walking to find the toilet and sees Waka-chan over there using her phone. Waka-chan asks him if he is looking for a toilet and guides him to where it is. Tomoyo-kun asks her what is she doing while standing out all by herself and she tells him that she is just breathing. She says pretending to smile all the time is tiresome and Tomoyo-kun asks her if she has to keep up her image even if she is drinking. Waka-chan says she has to keep up her image even if it is tiring because everyone loves it when she is as cute as this. Tomoyo-kun cannot understand her at all, 
and then she tells him that she has to keep up her image while standing out here because her alcohol tolerance is very low and she can get drunk just by smelling it. She had a wine-infused chocolate once and got really wasted because of it. Tomoyo asks her if she is for real and tells her to be careful not to drink anything weird like that. Waka-chan says she knows and Tomoyo walks towards the kitchen, so she tells him to wait as it is a kitchen. He says it is his bad and asks if the toilet is that way. And Waka-chan can't control her laugh, so she starts to laugh hard like a little kid. She calls him a dummy, and Tomoyo-kun says he is not sure if he is hallucinating or not. However, seeing her now, she is much cuter than earlier. He thinks how can a fake person like this have such a cute smile? Wakachan goes in there to sit with her friends and her friends tell her that the drinks are ready so she should sit here. She starts to drink because she feels thirsty and after drinking, she feels the taste is kind of weird. Another girl in there says she ordered a wine, but she got a non-alcoholic yogurt and she says someone ordered a yogurt before. Then she goes to meet Waka and says sorry to her because she thinks she picked up her drink by mistake. The girl tells Waka-chan that the drink she has is probably the wine she ordered, and Waka-chan exchanges her drink with her. However, she is super nervous because she never drunk an alcoholic drink before. Waka-chan isn't feeling good after she drinks a wine, so her friends are concerned for her and they ask her if she is okay. They tell her to drink water if she is not okay as it will help her somehow. Meanwhile, Tomoyo-kun walks in and asks everyone what happened, and one of the girls tells him that she thinks Waka-chan accidentally drank somebody else's glass of wine, and he remembers that her alcoholic tolerance is very low. He says she just told him her alcoholic tolerance is very low, and he asks Waka if she is all right. Waka-chan thinks this is not good because somehow she feels dizzy. Tomoyo keeps asking her so she says what it is and says it's so annoying. Then everyone joins and asks what is wrong with her. Tomoyo thinks she cannot control herself as she drank alcohol. He is worried that her true self will be exposed. He says to himself that this is not good if she keeps on like this, then it will be bad. Waka-chan keeps saying she has no clue what is happening and her head hurts like hell. Tomoyo asks her if she isn't feeling well, so how about they get her home? He picks her up and says to everyone that they will have to leave first. He has to help her get home. That is why he says goodbye to everyone and leaves whole his friends smiling that Tomoyo is taking Waka home. Suzuko is also left speechless as she didn't expect this to happen. While walking home, Waka asks why he dragged her like that as she was having fun in there and he tells her because she was going to expose her real face. Waka asks what is he talking about and he says he is talking about her big secret. It would be a big problem if anyone found it out. He says she has no clue about what he is saying, but he doesn't know it either. Why is he helping her hide it? Even if she got found out in front of everyone, it still has nothing to do with him. He thinks about every moment he had with her recently and how she called herself. Cute, he thinks he is being spun around like a wheel. Tomoe warns her to walk carefully or else she is going to fall, but she says there is no issue and then he asks her where is her house as he will walk her home. Wakachan says they are not going home already and Tomoyu asks, where are they going now? She tells him to wait because she doesn't want to go home yet. She asks him if they can go for a rest over there and then both of them go to rest in a hotel. When Tomoyo looks at the price of the room, he gets shocked and he asks her again if she is serious about it. Wakachan asks him what is he talking about and questions him if he doesn't like it. He says it is not just that, it is not like they are dating, so she asks him if they really cannot date. Tomoyo-kun says it is not like they cannot, and Waka-chan jumps on the bed and says it is so soft. Tomoyo thinks in the end they rented a room in a love hotel. He questions himself about what the hell are they thinking and calls himself an idiot. He thinks why did she insist on stopping at a love hotel all of a sudden, and this is the first time he has been in a place like this. He doesn't understand what is happening now as everything got messier just by stepping inside. However, a boy and a girl coming here together means they are obviously going to have to do that. He thinks if this is for real or if she is totally messing with him again. But even if it is a joke, who would come to a love hotel with a boy they don't like? 
He thinks if she thinks doing it with him is fine. He calms himself down by saying as if that would never happen and he will bet it is because she is dead drunk and now she cannot even control herself. Every day he watches the news and sees different stories about the Love Hotel. If he were to do such a thing, maybe he would get thrown into jail. He says he will calm down and take a deep breath as they are already here and then Waka Chan asks him what is he standing there for. She tells him to come sleep over here with her as this bed is so big. But he says it is fine. She asks him why not and tells him to come over here. Tomoyo kun lies right next to her and thinks why doesn't he have any dignity at all. This is a force major situation and then Waka Chan asks if this is comfy or not. However, he doesn't reply and looks at her while thinking that looking at her up closely, she does look very cute. Her hair is so smooth and her lips are so pump. Furthermore, her skin is so smooth and white and if people only see how she looks on the outside, then they will always believe she is a beautiful girl. Tomoyo kun finds it bad that two people are alone in a hotel room and the lights are dim. He thinks this is the perfect place to do it and his eyes light up. He is currently having an internal ideological crisis and then Waka Chan asks him, what is it so he thinks about what he did now? Then she flips and keeps her leg and head on his body and says it is so warm. His brain is now shutting down because according to him this is so bad he doesn't know how can he hold himself back when she is doing this. Then he tells Waka-chan to wait for a minute because it is too close and she asks him what is wrong with that. She pulls him towards herself and says he can move over here a little and grabs him more tightly. Tomoyo says he can tell things about her without even touching her. She is soft in all the right places and she smells so good. He looks at her and finds her cute and thinks it is because of the alcohol. He then wonders if he can make the next move as he wants to do it with her so badly. He cannot just do nothing in this kind of situation and he cannot waste an opportunity as well. He thinks doing nothing makes it look like he needs those little blue balls and besides she is inviting him to make a move now. Tomoyo says just a little is okay and she will forgive him anyway. He means from this day forward. He will never get a chance to go to a hotel with a pretty girl like this again. Therefore, this is his chance and it is a one-in-a-lifetime opportunity so he should avail it right away. Then he looks at her and thinks even though she is drunk like this, why is she still able to sleep so deeply next to a boy like this? Is she already used to being this close with a boy before? Even with the personality issues, a girl this pretty must have had a ton of boyfriends before. Therefore, she must have had plenty of past experiences already. He thinks her past relationships are not like they have anything to do with him right now. Perhaps it is because she came here with a boy she doesn't like that she can sleep so peacefully like this. Tomoyo then asks her why did she invite him to come here and she says why he asked this. She says what else could it be and gets up. She says he knows what coming here means and unbuttons her shirt. Tomoyo kun gets in a state of shock and he doesn't know why is she doing this. Tomoyo kun angrily asks Waka chan why is she undressing and he thinks not to tell him that she is inviting him. Waka chan asks him if he really wants to do it and says he also wants to come here for this. Tomoyo kun says he thinks there should be a proper order for things and Waka chan says they should rest. Then she tells him that she came here because she just wanted to rest for a bit as she lives far away and she is too tired to walk. She says it is on the sign outside that they can stay at this hotel for a little while and they charge by the hour. Tomoyo thinks that she wanted to come here because she is sleepy and he thinks he misunderstood it, but he thinks she looks very drunk, which is why she can't control her behavior. Tomoyo kun asks her, why is she taking off her clothes and she says hugging him earlier made her feel so hot as he is like a microwave. Then he asks her how can she say this so casually in front of a boy like this and Waka Chan says not to tell her that watching a girl undressing like this turns him on and she calls him a virgin again. She asks what is with him reacting to her undressing like this. She makes fun of him by calling him a virgin and finds it very funny. Tomoyo kun says he gives up. Dealing with her when she is drunk is more stressful than normal. Waka chan then lays to sleep and he says that she is already asleep. He says she is not being careful at all 
because something bad can happen without her knowing. He gets up from the bed and says what a strange girl she is because she is spinning him around in circles, like a Ferris wheel. Tomoyo-kun then covers her body with a blanket and then thinks it is time for a shower. After taking a long and nice shower, he wonders if he should stay here until morning as he was so confused earlier and now he is staying the night. He feels too sleepy and he cannot go home and leave her here like this. Thus, he decides that he will just stay here as he has no other option to consider. He sleeps on the couch and says to himself that there is no way he will be sleeping on the same bed as her. In the middle of the night, Tomoyo feels too cold and thinks, why is he sleeping here? Therefore, he gets up and goes to sleep in bed while he is half awake. Waka-chan feels uncomfortable, so she thinks, why is that so? Thus, she opens her eyes to see where in the world she is and what happened yesterday. However, when she opens her eyes, she sees Tomoyo Kun right in front of her sleeping peacefully. Waka-chan gets scared after seeing Tomoyo Kun sleeping right next to her in a hotel room. She gets up and thinks about how this happened and what did she yesterday as she cannot remember anything. She remembers that she drank some alcohol by mistake and she cannot remember anything after that. Then she looks at her shirt, which is half open, so she covers it and then sees the protection as it is in the box. Thus, she says it cannot be and questions herself if she did it. She cannot believe that she did it with Tomoyo already and keeps questioning herself because she doesn't want it to be true. She thinks if she did it, then it was her first time and then Tomoyo-kun wakes up. He asks why is he sleeping here and then both of them stare at each other for a bit. The situation gets awkward and both of them get out of bed. Tomoyo-kun thinks about how he ended up sleeping in her bed and Waka-chan calls him an idiot and a bad guy. She calls him a devil and asks how could he take advantage of a drunk girl like that? She asks him if he did unspeakable things to her last night and he tells her that he didn't do anything with her at all and she is just misunderstanding it. Tomoyo asks her if she doesn't remember what happened last night, and she asks him what kind of things he wants her to remember. Tomoyo-kun tells her that she got drunk yesterday, and she keeps saying not to tell her the story. He thinks this is bad as she is just thinking bad stuff, and he shows her the protections and tells her to look these were never opened. Waka-chan asks him if he did it without even using them, and he says not at all. This is not the truth. She keeps calling him a bad guy and a vulgar guy. And he says he is telling her this because she was so drunk yesterday. He says he tried to help her and Waka-chan says she never thought that he would be the kind of person who would do such things. And she tells him that she is going home while she keeps crying. Tomoyo asks her to wait, but she tries to open the door so that she can leave, but she cannot open it due to some reason. Then he says he asked her to wait. So she needs to listen to him. He tells her that she needs to listen to him right now. Waka-chan says sorry to Tomoyo-kun because she knows that she overreacted after he told her everything that happened last night. She says luckily nothing happened, but she was starting to panic and was really shocked. Tomoyo says it is okay, and he wishes he had just stopped her from coming here to begin with and says sorry to her too. Then Waka-chan says that she should have realized why this was odd and Tomoyo doesn't have the guts to do anything bad. She says she knows that happened, but why are they in a love hotel anyway? And he asks her if she doesn't really remember anything at all. Thus, he tells her that she said that she wanted to rest and she told him to take her here. Waka-chan's bits of memory are coming back and she thinks last night she did something really bad. She feels awkward and embarrassed after remembering what she did and she tells Tomoyo that she didn't mean anything last night. Tomoyo replies that he knows because she was really drunk and he knew that some things were definitely wrong. Then he advises her to be way more careful in the future because if she does this with any other guy, then she doesn't need to be surprised if they try to do something to her. He says she got lucky this time as he was with her this time and she asks him, why didn't he try anything? He says he guesses because doing something like that to her felt wrong so he didn't get aroused. Waka-chan says even though she is this cute still, he didn't do anything wrong with her and she didn't arouse him at all. She asks him if he is telling her the truth and he says who knows. She keeps asking him if he didn't get aroused even a little bit and he says it is not that he didn't get aroused, it is just that he didn't want to do it. Waka-chan then makes fun of him by calling him a virgin again and she asks him if he got aroused while coming to a hotel like this with her and he says this is it, 
he doesn't like her at all. He says he got tricked again by her, and then Tomoyo says to her he doesn't care who she does this with, but it is better if she doesn't do this again. However, Waka-chan says she didn't do anything and he tells her that she did with him. She tries to cover it up, but nothing comes up, so she keeps quiet this time. And then she says it is not her fault because she was too drunk and Tomoyo agrees with her. She says she went to sleep last night without taking a shower, so she is really uncomfortable right now and she is sweating too much. Tomoyo then asks her why doesn't she just take a shower now as it is time for checkout anyway. She gets up and says, she will do it right now, and he says he will wait for her here then. While entering the washroom, she asks him if he wants to join her, and he says no, he doesn't want to join her at all. When she goes in there, he thinks thankfully everything seems like it is back to normal, and the misunderstanding has been resolved. But since she reacted that much, it looks like she really has no interest in him after all. Tamayo Kun is happy that luckily, he didn't do anything wrong to her at all, but he thinks she was too drunk to remember anything. The way she was acting really had him nervous, but isn't it normal for a boy to be nervous going to a hotel with a girl? While thinking, he re And then he tells himself to stop, and he is positive. He has no special feelings for her anymore, and they are all gone now. However, this bed is really comfortable. On the other side, Waka-chan is taking a shower, and she thinks she is totally stuck now. While showering, he thinks she didn't think that she did anything too weird and thinks if this is going to be okay. She cannot remember anything too well, though, and finds it super embarrassing. Even though she thinks she was being really bad last night, how can Tomoyo-kun just act as casual like that? She thinks maybe he doesn't care about her anymore, and he even told her to go take a shower so shamelessly. She thinks she has known ever since she teased him that day. He doesn't seem to like her the way he used to. Therefore, of course, he is acting so casual with her now. She calls herself an idiot and hits her head on the wall. Then she questions herself, how could she be so stupid? Then she thinks about how he said, he doesn't care who she does it with, but it is best if she doesn't do this again. He thinks it is not like it would be fine with anyone. After taking the shower, they checked out from the hotel, and she said, taking a shower felt so good and that the hotel had everything she could even dry her hair and redo her makeup. Tomoyo says to her to low her voice and she asks him again if he saw the bathtub as it was surprisingly big and there was a television there too. Tomoyo says hotels are nice and then he asks her if it was her first time coming to a hotel and she says of course it is her first time. He asks her if she is for real because he thought she would be really familiar with places like that and she questions why the hell he thinks that. Tomoyo-kun cannot believe it is her first time, so he asks her if it is her first time, and she forcefully pulls a boy into a hotel while dead drunk, which is normally something to be concerned about. She says she cannot argue with that, and he says that is why he told her she needs to be careful next time. He says keep on flirting with them, virgins, like that, and one day it will backfire on her, and she says she hasn't flirted at all. Tomoyo says of course, and she says seriously she never flirted to make him trust her, and then he tells her to make sure to choose somebody like him who will always keep her safe. Waka says she already told him that she will never go to any hotel with a person that she is not comfortable with, and Tomoyo asks her what she just said. She replies that he heard her. She says even if she is totally drunk, she will never go to any hotel with a person she doesn't like, and he asks her what was that. He questions her if she is teasing him again as he is not going to get tricked by her again, Waka-chan starts to laugh and she asks what was that reaction and he says he knew it. Waka says to him that he got all flustered again and he questions her why she keeps doing this to him but she doesn't reply at all. Then she says that she feels hungry because they haven't eaten anything yet today. So he asks how about the convenience store and she refuses to go there. She says that she knows that she wants some ramen so Asara, it is then. Then Suzuko sees them both walking together, so she thinks Tomoyo might be with a friend. She approaches him, but she hears them talking about the hotel. Waka-chan asks Tomoyo, why don't they go to a hotel again, and he tells her to stop it right away because they cannot go there and there is no way. He tells her to stop talking so loud about it, and Suzuko is super angry when she hears the hotel word. Tomoyo's friends ask him what is going on with him lately, and he needs to give them details like what happened when he took Waka home. 
Tomoyo says nothing happened and tells them to lower their voices. His friends couldn't believe that he forced himself into a situation like that, and he asked them, how could he have forced that to happen and said he just did what he had to do. Waka's friends were also looking for her to come and they greeted each other after they met. Meanwhile, some guys think that Waka is just like an angel and they say good morning to her and they are so happy because they see Waka first thing in the morning. Tomoyo also bumps into them and he thinks, what the hell are his friends doing as they see each other every day? Then his friend asks Waka if they have to know what happened after the party. Did Tomoyo do any weird things or not? Tomoyo asked what kind of questions these and then Waka said she was okay Tomoyo was very sweet and the only thing he did was walk her home. Then she tells Tomoyo that she needs to talk to him about something later but in private. He asks her what is wrong and she laughs and says she cannot reveal it yet. Tomoyo doesn't feel so good about this and his friends yell at him after Waka-chan leaves that there is no way he can be so close to her. He feels jealous and then they ask him if this means what they think this means. His friend says something definitely happened between them two and Tomoyo says nothing happened between them at all. Meanwhile, he thinks there are a lot of things but saying them out loud here would be suicide. If there is nothing, why does she need to talk to him alone and his friends say not to tell them that she is going to confess to him? His friends also call him a virgin and they say there is no way this will happen. After the class ends, Tomoyo goes to meet Waka where she calls him but he is late because his last class took too long. Both of them are sitting in an empty class and Tomoyo looks at her and thinks she is not an angel at all. Then he asks her what she wants to say to him and she asks him how much was the total. He asks her what is she talking about and she says the hotel fees he paid for her too, so she needs to pay him back. Tomoyo says that he said she didn't have to worry about it. It was his treat and he didn't mind, but she says no way, she doesn't want there to be any misunderstandings. It is because she would be the one if they were dating, but they are not. So having him pay for a hotel room for her seems wrong. Then she asks if it could be while she was sleeping. He really did do something. Tomoyo says, hell no, he didn't do anything at all. And she says, let her pay for it then. He accepts it and thinks if he doesn't let her pay him, then she will think negative things about him. He is pretty sure that will happen eventually. And then he tells her it is 5,000 yen. She then takes out her wallet and counts the money to give him. But then she says all of her money for this month got spent on all the club's activities, the cherry picking and the drinking party they had. Tomoyo asks her if she really spent it all on that. And she thinks, what is she going to do as she doesn't have enough money? She asks him if she can pay him next month. And he says it is fine. He already told her it is his treat. Moreover, to be frank, he did kind of enjoy himself a little bit. Waka-chan says to him that he is always paying for her things and she cannot understand it at all. She says if she cannot pay the money, then she will have to pay with her body. Tomoyo asks her what she just said and she sits on the desk and asks him what he thinks of her body. She gets close to him and he asks her to wait and questions her about what is wrong with her. He says not to even joke like that and she starts to laugh again while calling him a virgin. Tomoyo gets mad at her so he tells her to shut up, but then he says to himself to calm down and not to get mad because she just wants him to react, and that is all. She then says to him that he can just think of it as borrowing her for a while, and she asks her, how can he be hungry this early as it has only been period two? He says he overslept, so he didn't get to eat, and she says it is not good to skip breakfast. He says he knows that. And then she asks him if he is eating properly at home as he is living all by himself. She asks him if he is buying fresh food and veggies at the supermarket and he says, lately, he has been only eating frozen stuff because they are yummy. After getting to know this, Waka asks him if he doesn't cook at all and he says he can cook a cup of ramen like a pro and rice too and she says his eating habits sound horrific. He then says it is just that cooking stuff is not for him and she says if that is how it is, then let her cook for him. After hearing these sugar words from her mouth, Tomoyo is left in shock. Waka-chan sets the timer on the clock and says it is time for her to start cooking. The day before it, when she asked him to let her cook for him, she told Tomoyo that she would make bento for him to pay him back for the hotel fees. She said she would make it for him by herself, 
so she is sure he will enjoy it. However, she says it is fine if he doesn't want it and Tomoyo asks her shockingly if she will really make him a bento. She asks him if he really wants her to make one for him. And he says sure if it is just a thank you gift. She agrees to make a nutritious meal for him and she will bring it for him tomorrow. Tomoyo says thanks to her for it and thinks it is true that his lifestyle is pretty unhealthy these days, but he is so lucky. Welka is cooking food for him at her house, although she just learned how to cook recently because she needs to know how to cook when she is living by herself. She is very confident in her cooking, and to make a perfect bento, she will need to make her resolve even stronger. While cooking, she thinks she will definitely make Tomoyo praise it for sure and she starts to decide what to do for the desert. Tomoyo's friends ask him if he wants to eat with them after school today, and he agrees with them. His friends ask him what will he eat, so he tells them that he prefers the donkey because he likes it better. He says he loves the minced meat over there, and his friends say they will order donkeys for him. In class, Waka brings the food that she cooked for Tomoyo, and he asks her shockingly if she really made this for him and thanks her for her efforts. She tells him that there is no need to thank her. He can just eat it and then Suzuko bumps into them and asks if they are having lunch in the club room. Tomoyo says yes since he is having a bento today and Suzuko says it is so nice. Then she tells him that she brought a bento too and she also got bread in it. After looking at it, Tomoyo says it is amazing and he asks Suzuko if she made it by herself so she tells him that she brings homemade lunches all the time and she loves cooking after all. Then the president asks if they want to try it as her cooking is really good. Suzuko asks the president, why would he invite them to eat her lunch all of a sudden? And he says, it is fine and tells them that they can try it. Tomoyo takes the first bite and he enjoys it a lot. So he says, the food is too good. Waka also appreciates her cooking skills and the president says, of course, Suzukio has been an amazing cook for a long time now and Suzuko asks him who needs him to notice. Tomoyo says that Suzuko Senpai is really good at cooking, and then he opens the bento that Waka cooked for him, but she closes the lunchbox and asks him why don't they go to the cafeteria because somehow she wants to go to the cafeteria so they should go there. Tomoyo asks her to wait for a second, but she drags him along and says to Suzuko that she is thankful for letting them try her food. Both of them walk out of there and Wakai says to Tomoyo to hurry up as it might be busy there because she heard that the menu is really good today. Tomoyo asks her what about bento and she replies that she will make another one for him next time, but he says she already made this for him today. Waka then replies that they should hurry and she tries to cover up the situation. However, Tomoyo-kun asks her to hang on and wait for a second while she is walking right in front of him. He tells her that he is not going to the cafeteria because he wants to have her bento today. Waka asks him shockingly why he wants to eat her bento as it is not that good, and he says he doesn't want to eat anything else. He says he only wants her bento, but since she told him that she will make it for him today, he didn't bring enough money to pay for lunch. Then he takes the lunchbox from her and sees bento in there. He says it is food inside a bento box, and it looks so good. Waka tells her to knock himself out, and she thinks this is pure torture as he has already sampled that luxurious bento. Tomoyo takes the first bite, but he doesn't say anything for a second. So Waka says to him in her mind to say something already. Then she says there is nothing special about it at all. It is because she was in a hurry, so she is sure it is not so good. She says if he doesn't like it, then he can just throw it out. Tomoyo gains consciousness and asks her what she just said because he was too focused on the food. He didn't hear what she just said. Then he says the food is extremely good and he thinks this is the first time in his life that a girl has made him a bento, let alone a girl like Waka. He is feeling kind of jittery somehow, but she said she made this in a hurry and she was still able to get it this good. He says that the miso soup is very savory and he thinks that Waka is like this because of him. He imagines her saying she spent a lot of time cooking this for him, but then he tells himself that he is sure she only made this bento to repay the 5,000 yen. Then Waka bets that he probably never had a bento made by a girl ever before and tells him to better thank her for it as she cooked it for him. Tomoyo thanks her and says he is really happy and asks if it is normal to be this happy. Waka says she guess it is, and then he says he loves meat cutlets a lot, so this one is his favorite. While he is eating the food, 
Waka says this is her specialty if he knows and after eating the lunch, he says the food was too good. Then Waka says that wasn't her really best effort, but still she is glad that he liked it. However, she is sure that it didn't even compare to Suzuko Senpai's bento and Tomoyo says her bento was good, but even so, he still liked this one more. Waka asks him why, and he replies that one can tell this is a guy's bento because this one is totally stuffed full of meat, and also the seasoning on this one is much richer. Waka-chan asks if a guy's bento is a compliment because she is a girl, and he says he didn't mean it. Her bento was really good. He appreciates her cooking and says her cooking is not bad at all, and they both smile after it. Waka feels so lucky after it, and she thinks practice makes it perfect. Tomoyo thinks if he heard her right, and what is going on? How can a meanie like her be like this? He thinks she is really a mean person because she seemed happy when he liked the bento she made to thank him, and it was really good too. He says he is done, and he doesn't get it at all, and Waka asks him what it is. While they are sitting alone, a girl is peeping at them, and she thinks if it is Tomoyo and the girl from yesterday is sitting with him too. She says they are sitting together in such an empty place and he is eating some homemade bento while there is no one else around here. Therefore, that means that they really are something. The girl who was peeking at Tomoyo and Waka-chan goes to the ground for the morning run. She says the morning is so nice today and it feels good like this. Then she thinks about Tomoyo and Waka-chan and says that the girl yesterday was definitely close to him but then she tells herself not to care about it and closes her eyes. She keeps running and says she is going to do her best today as well. It is 1 p.m. on a nice sunny day, and the lunchtime is over. Tomoyo-kun says that he is completely full and third period class seems like it will never end. It is the sleepiest time of the entire day and he cannot even keep his eyes open. He thinks the voice of this professor is so hypnotic that he just wants to sleep already. Tomoyo-kun keeps himself up but he is so sleepy that he thinks he is about to nod off. While he's going to nod off, Waka-chan pushes his hand and he asks her what it is for. She texts him back that she was just trying to wake him up as he was just going to sleep, and he asks her if she couldn't see a less painful way because it really hurt. Waka-chan asks him if he would like a kiss then, and he replies not to make jokes like that. She asks him by text if he doesn't remember he asked her to sit here the other day, Tomoyo remembers that day when he asked her if she was looking for a place to sit and told her that the seat right next to him was empty. Tomoyo replies whatever and says it is no fun sitting next to her anyway, and Waka-chan says not to tell her that he is just going to ignore her now. Tomoyo gets a shock when he reads this message, and then she asks him if he hates her that much and if she is really that obnoxious. He thinks that she actually does know that she is obnoxious and asks her in texts if she really thinks he would give her the silent treatment like a kid. Waka understands that he will not ignore her and Tomoyo-kun thinks it is true that her teasing really pisses him off, but he cannot ignore her. Therefore, he texts her that he is not ignoring her or anything and he certainly doesn't hate her either. Waka-chan looks in the opposite direction after reading this text. Meanwhile. Tomoyo looks at a girl right next to him, and he thinks it really looks like that girl actually fell asleep. He says seeing someone else sleeping in the class like that makes him sleepiness fade away a bit. He keeps looking at her and then thinks if he has seen her somewhere before, and then the girl falls on him, but he stops her by holding her hand. He gives her a soft touch and thinks he accidentally grabbed the arm of a strange girl and says sorry to her in his mind. The girl wakes up and she says sorry to him because she fell asleep right next to him and was going to fall on him. They both stare at each other and Tomoyo thinks if he knows and the girl asks him what he just said. When the girl asks Tomoyo what he just said, the teacher looks at them and asks if there is a problem up there. The girl gets up and says it is nothing and she is sorry for the disturbance she created in the class. They both recognize each other and the girl says it really is Tomoyo and he recognizes her too. She is Yukuzi and they both are going to the same school. Tomoyo asks her how he hasn't seen her on campus ever before and she says she is not sure. She asks him how long has it been now. Yukuzi says the last time they met was in middle school and then Tomoyo introduces her to Waka-chan. He tells her that this is his childhood friend and Yukuzi tells her that her name is Nakano Yuzuki. 
Yuzuki greets Waka-chan and says it is nice to meet her and Waka remembers that she is the girl in the picture that Tomoyo showed them. Waka also introduces herself and tells her that she is a friend from the same club as Tomoyo and Yuzuki, says they both must get along well then. Yuzuki asks Waka-chan if she can call her Waka as her name is so cute. Then she remembers that she had heard this name before and Waka tells her that maybe she is just mistaken for it. Then she asks Tomoyo if he doesn't think it sounds familiar and Waka says now that she has mentioned she is sure that she has just mistaken her for someone else. Waka-chan says they are in the same class, then how come she has never seen her? Yuzuki says that she is always asleep in that class so it might be why she never saw her ever before. All of them laugh. And then Tomoyo says to Yuzuki that her bad habit of sleeping in class never changed and she tells him that it didn't change and she still does it. Then she says that Tomoyo hasn't changed at all too, and he asks her if she really thinks so. She then says he has gotten a little taller, she thinks, and Tomoyo tells her that she doesn't look too different either, but she says she has changed a lot. She asks him to look carefully, and he understands where she has gotten bigger. Tomoyo thinks she has really gotten bigger, and she is wearing makeup now. Yuzuki tells him she has started wearing makeup ever since he started college and Tomoyo is still thinking about her chest, so he questions himself as to why is he still thinking about it. However, aside from that nothing really has changed about her. They might not have seen each other in years, but they can still talk just like they used to. After school while walking home, Waka-chan thinks she never thought a childhood friend would be studying in the same school, and then she asks herself, why is she getting upset about it? It is because it has got nothing to do with her and she starts to walk again. She says it is such a refreshing way to relieve stress. And then she sees a public bath in the area. She thinks soaking in all that hot water will feel really good so she decides to give it a try and see if it changes how she feels today. Then she walks in there and soaks herself in hot water and says soaking in hot water reminds her of old times and nothing is better than stretching her legs while bathing like this. She says the bathtub in a one-person apartment is way too small to relax, and she looks at her melons and thinks they aren't that small either. She questions herself if they aren't just normal size and thinks other girls are mostly around this size too. While she is worried about her melons, Yuzuki is also in there and she says to her that her melons are so big. Then Yuzuki asks if it is Waka-chan. 